Today, we're going to discuss melatonin and its role with COVID-19. So your sleep and schedule have a major impact on immunity and the rhythm of how your hormones are released during the daytime and nighttime, we call that your circadian rhythm. And melatonin is a critical hormone that's involved with your circadian rhythm. And we often call it the vampire hormone because it's meant to rise at nighttime and fall in the morning. So when sunlight hits your eyes, it basically blocks the release of melatonin, which is what we want because it's a sleep promoting hormone. And in the nighttime, as we get away from light, artificial sources and sunlight, then melatonin starts to rise in our body. And that's the optimal thing that we want to happen. Now, how is this related to COVID-19? Back to my diagram here from COVID number one. So co when COVID-19 basically replicates inside, let's say our lung cell, it can trigger that cytokine fire specifically due to a protein called NLRP3. Now melatonin, interestingly, think of it as being a hose. It can actually pour water on the cytokine fire. It can tame that NLRP3 flame so we don't get as much excess cytokine toxicity to the cell, which can literally destroy and kill the cell itself. So really, when you think about melatonin's role, it's got major roles with the immune system and overall, overall well-being. Number one, it regulates sleep and circadian rhythm. The second thing we talked about is it tames or turns down NLP3. And the third thing it also does is it actually has antioxidant action. It can actually combat the free radicals that are generated in our body and which in excess can damage and age our cells. So melatonin actually has antioxidant impact as well. So how do we naturally preserve melatonin in our body? This is all about schedule. It's all about schedule and light. So when you wake up in the morning, it's a good idea to get some form of physical activity or exercise, preferably outdoors. The second thing is if you're not getting an exercise, which you should get, at least make sure you're getting some morning daylight exposure. And also try to get some exposure around noon or solar noon. The other thing is we're finding through studies that we need to finish our meals earlier. So in general, try to finish by 7 p.m., 7.30 latest. But when you start eating beyond that period, a lot of my patients who eat at 8, 9 p.m., that can also disrupt our circadian rhythm and melatonin production. Shut off those blue lights that are coming from our digital devices, computers, smartphones, LED TVs, etc., and do that at least 90 minutes before um, bedtime. Two hours would be even better. And finally, remember that eating, sleeping, exercising at these consistent times, keeping your schedule as consistent as possible, is going to help with natural melatonin production. If you absolutely have to do any digital work at nighttime, I put a couple of images of different strategies you can use. You can do the orange goggles. You can download the f.lux software onto your desktop device. Or if you've got an iOS device, just make sure to flip it onto night shift mode. Now, having said that, even if you're using these devices, they can help maximize melatonin, but they can still activate your brain. Whenever we're on screens, it can stimulate the brain and prevent deep phase sleep at nighttime. So I know your next question is going to be, why can't I just take a supplement and not have to deal with all this other stuff that we just talked about? Now, first keep in mind that there is theoretical but no proven scientific benefit that melatonin can have any impact on COVID-19 cytokine release. So that has not been studied or proven as of recording this video. We want to, whether you take melatonin or not, you absolutely have to prioritize the lifestyle measures we discussed. Supplementation may or may not help, but make sure you stick to the lifestyle things that we talked about regarding your natural schedule. And then talk to your health practitioner. If you feel like melatonin might benefit you, talk to your health practitioner who will be up to date on the guidelines. And typically you want to start with the lowest dose possible, taken around 30 minutes before bedtime. For my resources, download my free COVID ebook, subscribe to my YouTube co-video series, and follow me on Instagram.